So this video's purpose is to give you a little bit more information about oxen. And no, I'm not referring to the oxen that pull covered wagons across the prairie. I'm referring to the oxen that we have in a product that we work with called Ascend Squared. Now what we know about oxen is a level that's too low doesn't have the effect and a level that's too high doesn't have the effect. We call this the Goldilocks demonstration. So I have four different treatments in front of me. One is the untreated, the positive control is the Ascend Squared treated. Then we have an oxen level that is too low and an oxen level that is too high. What does oxen actually do in that seedling? Well, what we find is that oxen has a major role in plant growth and also helping that plant produce other hormones. The other thing is that we find that oxen is primarily found in the growing regions of the shoots. So when that seedling germinates, what we see is that there's not a whole heck of a lot of shoot growth that's there. Most of it is root growth. And so the plant has doesn't have as big of an ability to make the roots or those shoots grow because it doesn't have the shoots there to produce the oxen. Having a higher concentration of oxen initially in plant growth has helped us develop a bigger, more consistent root system to that plant below ground, which help that plant, helps that plant get above ground a lot quicker. So we know that too little and too much is not always a good thing. And actually, when we look at too much, you say, well, okay, we got more oxen here. What we expect that plant to grow a lot quicker. And what we find that is oxen is also very important for root initiation. So we have too much oxen. What the plant actually does is it concentrates the majority of its time below ground, trying to initiate roots and doesn't really focus on the above ground growth. So I dug a few of those seedlings here just so you could see what I was talking about. And here you can see that there's not a very good above ground growth. And actually some of those leaf margins are firing already, but we have very good below ground root growth, robust radical roots, um, quite a few seminal roots that are still very long. So we know that that plant is really concentrating on that root growth uh, below ground. The problem with that is you might say, okay, well, we're getting good root growth early season, but it's a ticking time bomb until that plant can start to develop its own photosynthetic factory to support itself. Meaning the plant's gonna run out of nutrients, it's gonna run out of sugars in that seed because the roots are just taking up nutrients, but we need to convert those nutrients into a sugar that can feed the growth of the rest of the plant. So getting above ground is gonna be key. And that's why we find that optimizing that ratio of oxen with gibberellic acid and with cytokinin and the sen squared really give us that, that focal point of getting the consistent responses that we see and want to see in the field. So when we look at those responses in the field, what are we actually seeing for yield? Well, we're seeing uh, over four years of research, 67 locations, we're seeing a three bushel average response in yield. And that average response is fairly consistent across a wide variety of locations, as well as geography and, and a number of different environmental uh, conditions given the amount of years tested. On top of that, we also see a consistent emergence, so a lot of times more even consistent emergence, which then makes a even ear set. So we get evenness in ear set. That means that those kernels are filling at the same capacity, which gives us the consistency that we see in the yield. So the next time you think about oxen, don't think about the, the things that pull cover wagons across the prairie. Think about a product called Ascend Squared and why oxen is so important for that corn seedling to get up above the ground and put roots down below. So this video's purpose is to give you a little bit more information about gibberellic acid and what it does in the germinating corn seedling. We're gonna focus on the gibberellic acid level, specifically in a product that we work with called Ascent Squared, and how it facilitates the overall response that we see with this product. So first off, what we find is we look a lot of times at the varying level of gibberellic acid. Here you can see four different treatments that I'm looking at. The first one, untreated control, then we have a positive control, Ascend Squared, where gibberellic acid is too low and where gibberellic acid level is too high. The first thing that you might notice, the plants that where the gibberellic acid is too high are taller, um, seem to be outgrowing a lot of the other seedlings that are in front of you. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but there you can see that there are some significant differences in varying those levels. One of the things that we know that gibberellic acid is very important for is it's very important for breaking seedling dormancy meaning I always say it turns on the light switch. So as soon as that plant gets uh, imbibes moisture, gets moisture in there, hydrates the enzymes, gibberellic acid is what flips those light switches on and starts those plant processes going. 
a lot of times you say, okay, well, that's a great thing. The more gibberellic acid you have, the better. But what we also know about gibberellic acid is it's important in stem elongation. So once that plant switches to vegetation mode, meaning put above ground or tissue above ground, we get a lot more increase in stem elongation. That can absolutely be seen here where we put too much gibberellic acid. One of the consequences of that potentially is that maybe we don't spend enough time below ground developing the root mass or developing the stem girth that we need for late season standability. And that might be absolutely what we see with, with too much gibberellic acid in furrow. Here at Winfield United, we've done plenty of research over the years trying to develop a product that's formulated with the proper ratios of these PGRs. Um, meaning auxin, gibberellic acid, and cytokinin to make sure that we're getting the consistency and optimized response that we would expect in that inferral application. With a sense squared, what we see in the field is we get increased emergence and vigor, meaning a lot of times attributing to uh, gibberellic acid as well as auxin production in the plant, but then also regulated by the cytokinin level in the ascent square. So that increased emergence and vigor a lot of times leads to below ground root mass later into the season. So we can see that below ground root mass is still being affected from that auxin concentration late in the season. But then as we move into ear set, we get that evenness of ear set. And that goes right back to how that seed broke dormancy with that gibberellic acid. Breaking dormancy, flipping the lights on at the same time is gonna be very important. With that evenness and ear set, a lot of times that's gonna translate into the consistency that we see in the yield results. So the yield results that we've seen, again, four years worth of research, 67 locations. We're seeing a three bushel average across the board when I compare starter zinc applications, so untreated versus the starter zinc and ascent squared application that three bushel response is translated through a wide geography and multiple years and locations to make sure that that grower or uh, uh, producer is getting the most mileage to that inferral application as we possibly can, given varying weather environments and, and anything else that mother nature can throw at it. So at Winfield United, we take PGR concentration very seriously when it comes to our in corn applications. We set up the Goldilocks demonstration to talk a little bit about how levels of PGRs really matter to the corn plant, making sure that we don't have too low of a level or too high of a level. Today in this video, I'm gonna talk about the cytokine level and what cytokine actually does in the plant. You can see four treatments in front of me, the untreated, the ascend square treatment, the cytokine and low treatment, and the cytokine and high treatment. First, what does cytokinin actually do in the plant? We find that it's found in the plant at those root tips or in young leaves or stems in that plant. It's also found um, in seeds, so initially there in the seed. Um, and what cytokinin actually does is it delays the aging process in those leaves as that seedling grows, but it also helps with nutrient and photosynthate transport. Another important feature of cytokinin is it helps regulate the effect of auxin in the plant. A lot of times too much auxin is not always a good thing or too little auxin is not always a good thing. Cytokine really helps that plant regulate the auxin level. The last thing that does is it helps the plant with cell differentiation, meaning it, tell, it tells the cells what they're gonna be when they grow up. Are they gonna be a root? Are they gonna be a leaf? Are they gonna be a, a tassel? Are they gonna be an ear? What might they turn into when they grow up? Cytokine is very important for doing that. So when we look at the ratio of cytokine and inferral, really what we want is we want to make sure that we're able to have enough of an effect of an auxin to get those cells dividing actively and then shoot that plant up of the ground. We also want to have a gibberellic effect where we can break dormancy and get vigorous emergence as well. But the cytokine really helps pump the brakes. We know that when young plants make bad decisions or maybe young students make bad decisions, not so great things happen. So cytokinin is really there to pump the brakes on that a little bit, help that plant assess the scenario, and then moderate the amount of PGRs or effort that it puts into certain components of its growth early season. And that's really what we see in the demonstration. Now, what do we see in the field? In the field, we see uh, th four years worth of research, 67 different locations. We're getting up to three bushel responses on average with the addition of a sense squared on top of a starter and zinc. So that uh, average yield effect is over a, a wide geography across the Corn Belt in, in the United States. And that's where we see the consistency in the ratios with the sense squared. 
Now, Sand Squared has a few different patents pending, one of them being on the ratios and the other one being on the formula. And that really puts it into a unique category that's uh, very similar to the other Ascend products, but the only similarity is in the name. The other differences that we're seeing in formulation, as well as ratios of PGRs are completely different from the other products. So now that you know a little bit more about cytokinin and what Ascend Squared does, hopefully you can apply this to your conversations uh, of, to what plants are doing in the field and how you might influence their yield.